So, how do we make the mirror in this simple scene? Well, the first thing is, just using a bit of the physics knowledge we have, we know that the incident, like our view towards the mirror and the reflection, the angle is equal. So, if we're the camera and we move, the reflection moves as well. And that's kind of the tricky part here. So, what I've done to keep it simple, it's not a a fast rule, but just for this demo, I've put the mirror itself at zero, zero on X and Y, and Z it's up the wall, so it needs to be 140. Um, and that just makes the math simpler because it's a little bit, you need to keep track of your numbers basically for this for this to work. So the first thing we'll do is set up our hero camera rig and it is a rig because we need to use a dummy object. So we'll start with creating a box. Uh, make it smaller so it's not so obnoxious. I always put, in this case, I always put the pivot point in the middle. And then I'm going to put it up to 120. It doesn't have to be the same as the mirror, it's just a matter of where you want the rotation point to be. So zero, zero, and 120 for the box as well. So it's basically on the exact same plane as the mirror, the reflective part of the mirror, not the frame. Okay, so the next order of business is to create a camera. Now, when I create the camera, obviously it creates it looking through it. So let's go back to preview. And I'm gonna just make the numbers zero where it is okay so there it is but it's looking at the ground so let's rotate that 90 and then I'll put that up as well 120 so it's exactly on the same point as the dummy object so what we need to do now is move it back in Y and I'm gonna move it back say 400 and once that's there we can then attach it to the dummy object. That didn't work. Oh, got the emissive plane, which is hidden. So attach to the box. And while we're at it, let's call the box Cam Hero Control. Okay, so now if I rotate that box, camera pivots around it, so we're on the right track. And if we look through the camera, we'll see. Rotate the box, I get a nice little arc around the scene. So that's stage one. Uh, let's go back to preview. What we now need to do is create another camera that moves in the same way but not exactly um, on the other side so that we can see her and I do have a light for her um, which is a GI light but I'll get to that later it just slows things down otherwise so let's go back to this oh and there's also a back wall here which is hidden so we'll see that later too oh yeah Okay, so what we need now is basically an identical camera on the other side. Same exact, um, with all the same parameters, but inverted, if that makes sense. So basically a mirror image of that camera. So we'll start by creating another box. And make it 10%. And... Put the pivot point in the middle and move it up to 120. Okay. And this one I'm going to call Cam Reflection Control. And that's why we're here. Let's name the camera Hero. Okay. So we need to create another camera. I'm just using the default camera settings again, just for ease. You can obviously, if you want to do the work, you can always change all of those things. 
Okay, so we need to change back to preview and then call this camera cam reflection. Okay, so where is it? Well, it's wherever that clone decided to put it. So let's do the old zero out. Okay, so it needs to be, let's move in a bit. Sorry, I'm, hang on. So the camera wants to be at 120 above the ground and it wants to be rotated and then facing the opposite way, so 180. Okay. So now that one is on the other side of the mirror, which is what you would expect. And if we move that back, you can see how things are progressing here. Okay. So what do we know from the first camera? Well, we know it's minus 400 back. So the reflection camera needs to be plus 400 so that it's exactly the same distance from the mirror. And now things hopefully are starting to make a little bit of sense to this method. Okay. So we need to ref we need to parent that to the or attach that to the other control. And so I've got that selected, attach, reflection control. Okay. So now I can do that. And of course it's going to look, let's put that light on. It's going to look quite a lot different um, to the hero camera. But let's remember there's distance between her and the mirror. So the way we see reflections is it's not the same size as us. It's as if we're on the other side of the glass, the same distance away. So it's all, it's all good. Right now everything's working just fine. Okay, so let's set up our move. And the way to do that is just to use only your controls. So we'll go hero control and we will rotate it. I'm going to go not so much. I'm going to go minus 25. And then I'm going to go to the end of the clip and make it plus 25, just for simplicity. So here we go. Right. Um, the other thing, which is actually super important for this to work, is your transforms have to be the same for both of these control objects, i.e. your camera controls because you can't have one of them on linear move and the other one on some sort of smooth move or um, a curve that you've altered. It, it doesn't matter if you do change them, but they have to be consistent. So just for fun, I'm going to change these to linear. And that way I know exactly where I am. I could always change it later if I don't like the look, but for now let's just do that. So what do we do with the other camera? Now that we have a move here with our hero camera, we need to replicate that with the second camera, the reflection camera. So we now grab its control and we want it to start at the same angle this side. So it's actually plus 25 and we go to the end and minus 25. Okay, so what you should have looks like this. So they're keeping their relative angles exactly the same. Oh, and you can see there, I haven't adjusted this one yet, so they arrive at different times, which is why it's really crucial to make sure that they're the same. So let's select that. Transition curve, change it to linear. Close that, and one last preview. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn the GI off, which is why we got a bit of stuttering here. Okay, I'm just gonna save that. So now, what we wanna do is, we don't need to see our controllers anymore. We wanna select our hero camera, and we wanna render it out.
So let's start. I've got my GI on. So I'm going to render it as a PNG sequence at 1080. Everything's set the way I would like. 30 frames and export. And I'm going to call this um, foreground scene pass. Save. And once that render is finished, we now want to do a pass with just her. And the reason being is we want to be able to isolate her in front of that. So really we're just doing it for the mat, but we may as well just render her as is. Because uh, ultimately it just makes the next stages easier. So I'm just going to turn off the mirror frame and the front wall. And she's on her own. Render, all the same settings. This time I'm going to call it foreground woman pass. Let's just copy that. And off we go. Time to make another cup of tea. Okay, and when our isolated woman render is finished, we now need to switch to the reflection camera. And I'm going to put my back wall into view. Um, I don't need the mirror frame. It's just going to get in the way. So this is essentially what we're rendering here. Okay, so render settings, and this time I'm going to call it background reflection pass. Go. Oh, coffee this time, I think. Once that render's finished, we're almost finished in iClone. What I want to do though now is actually export. Uh, let's put the front wall on and the mirror. I want to actually use the 3D geometry from the scene in Fusion to generate mats. So we will turn off our girl just so we know what we're dealing with here. So don't need the back wall and we don't need the GI emitter so we just want the front wall mirror frame and the hero camera those three things and we want to export those as an FBX file um, when I export to Fusion I usually set it to Cinema 4D so that we get Y is up and we're working at 30 frames a second I'm going to select all. That's it. So I hit export and I will give it a name. So let's call this iClone Mirror Trick Demo. Okay. Save that. So let's just save our project and exit iClone and here's Fusion waiting for some action. So we start with loader and I'm going to load scene pass first. Don't ask why, just dem. Fit. Let's make one viewer. Pull this up a little higher and that is the range of this which shows up here, which is 169, so I'll make the whole timeline 169 so that I know that the end of the timeline is the end of the clip, and so on. Okay, deselect that, click on loader. Let's go get uh, the woman pass. Check to see, yep, she's all cut out the way we want it to be. And click select the background reflection pass oops that one there we go so reflection pass main scene woman on her own pass okay so here comes the advanced bit we're actually going to import so go to file import fbx scene we're going to import the FBX file that we just created in iClone. And when you say open, you get a few options here. Just everything's 
fine. Just things to watch out for is that it is, in fact, convert up axis to Y. And you also want to scale the units to 0 0.01, just so that it works in fusion space in the same relative size as things that you would create in fusion. Uh, and the resampling rate, we want to be 30 frames a second, same as we did in iClone, and merge into existing document. Okay. That actually changes your document length. I don't know why. It's a bit rude. So let's put it back to 169 on both of those numbers. Okay, so this, if we drag this root node in there, what we're looking at is actually perspective view of what we exported. So it's just our camera. There's our wall. There's a mirror frame in the mirror. And there's the camera move. Now, there is a, a little fault in iClone's export where so, uh, probably because Fusion starts at frame zero, you'll see how the range of view changes. And that is actually, here's our camera. That is actually our focal length jumping just on frame zero. Um, we don't need keyframes on the focal length, so just drag anywhere away from that. And you need to unlock the camera because obviously it's protected so you can't mess up the animation. And then you right click on focal length. Make sure it says 50 because that's the default size. And remove cam hero focal length thing. That takes the animation off. And then we can lock it again. So now the focal length won't jump. Okay, so the reason we want this is when we look at our scene, the mirror is actually its own piece of geometry, but it's not separate from everything else. It's actually slightly occluded. You can see the shadow here behind the edge of the mirror uh, frame. Um, so just exporting a pass like we did of the woman on her own to get the mat. Um, to do that for the mirror is kind of not really the way to go. It's better if we can actually create from this a mat to open up so that we can view our reflection pass. And it's actually that easy because what we're looking at over here, these are all just the channels of the shaders like bump pass and so on. So we don't need any of these. So let's just select all of these, all the uh, green and the kind of yellowish ones there. Just delete those. Now if we look at the whole root node scene there, you can see the frame is still, oh, there's another little camera hiding there. There, That's an inverted camera, by the way. I don't know why they give us that. Um, there's, this is the frame, picture frame. This is the mirror, and this is the wall. So let's just make it a room here. Oh, and we're still looking at shaders, so we can delete these as well. So all we're left with is the geometry. So in this case, we're talking about the mirror and frame and the front wall. Now everything's white, so this is a problem. We actually want everything to be black except for the mirror which wants to stay white. And if you're wondering you can, I think it's your middle mouse button, yeah middle mouse button can pan around this space here and if it goes off screen you get like a mini view over here which you can drag. Okay so where were we? Oh yes. So we have the mirror in its frame and the front wall all the same color at the moment, which is a problem. So we go to the frame geometry and under materials, see, oh, I'm not looking at the right thing. Root node, there we go. This is our scene basically here. In fact, you could rename that, just F2. I'll call it scene. 
Right. And this other camera we don't need. It's not attached. There we go. Nice and clean. And let's save everything while we're at it. Save. I've already named it. Mirror trick demo. Okay. So we're looking at the scene. I select the frame and I can change the color. So let's make it black. And the same with the plane. Okay. So now what we have is just white, just where the mirror shows up based on the camera. So let's actually see that. Let's get a render on the end. So select scene and select 3D render. And I'm going to view that. I want to change the render type to OpenGL because it's just quicker. And fit. Okay, so here's our mat. It's a moving mat now based on the geometry. Okay, it's subtle, but it's, it's moving. And we want to use that to help us combine these passes. So let's start with the main scene pass. We need this mat. Let's use two views as well. So here's the main scene, and here's the mat. We need this mat to cut a hole here. And the easiest way to do that is to use the, the mat as a mask. I know they, those two terms seem to be interchangeable, but there's a reason for that. And mats can do um, different things within the realm of compositing, whereas a mask is strictly just what it's for, is for masking an area. And they can be very clever masks, but essentially it's a bit of a brute cuts a hole <laughs> that's the thing okay so with our scene selected we want to merge our reflection pass over top of it like that so the output to the output makes a new merge drag that in here and first problem we notice is that she hasn't been she hasn't been cut out yet I can take this whole comp that we have here, which is this. I can just select everything. In fact, I'll just select the first part and I'll just hit Control G and that makes it nice and neat. Okay, so this renderer here, just giving us this. Let's go back to one view. I don't need that. Okay, so this is our mat. Here we have that over that, giving us that. And then we have the mask input. So let's just drag this into there. Boom, nothing happens. Well, the reason is it's looking for an alpha. So in the merge, if you go into the channels tab here, you'll see I can change the mask input. I can invert it, I can multiply it, but I want to change the channel, not alpha. I want it to be luminance. Okay, so now it's cutting a hole in the right place. But there's another problem. Our girl seems to be opposite to what we need. And what does that mean? Well, let's just flip her. So, go to the reflection pass, selected, grab a transform, and let's view the transform, and flip horizontally. Now when we look at the merge, there you go. She's at least going the right direction now. So our last problem, which is quite obvious here, is that we need her back on top. And guess what? We have her already cut out. So if I drag the output from this layer over the comp, it creates a new merge, which makes our final image. I'll just jump in here because it doesn't render quite real time in with this 3D um, little comp pre-comp that's going on in here. And the great advantage here is that with the reflection pass, at the moment it looks like a window or a hole in the wall where you're seeing the same girl, you know. It doesn't look as much like a reflection because we're not getting any sense of glass. So what we can do is just make some room here on this layer in fact, I'll do it after the transform so you're not confused. I'll add a color corrector and look at the final merge. 
And with that color corrector, I can tint the glass. Usually maybe, well, we're already pretty green in this scene, so let's go a little bit bluish. Just saying it's a cheap mirror and it doesn't quite reflect exactly the right color. I can also like boost the contrast and maybe give it a bit of lift or a lot of lift so that you get the feeling that you're not looking at a perfect image. In fact, there would be glare on the glass from the lights that are hitting from over this side, but I think for this tutorial that might be a little bit too advanced, but rest assured you can do it. Uh, the other thing that is cool about this is if we decide, oh, you know what? She should be a little more out of focus because we're focused on her, who's actually further away, even though it's a reflection. The camera doesn't see it that way. The camera sees her as further away. So if we're focused on her, I'm going to go to our foreground woman here. And we'll select that. And then let's add a defocus. So control space bar, and it gives you a list. And you can go D, E, F. There it is. OK. And we don't need the blooms on it. So the defocus, let's make it about three, four. There you go. And thinking the wall should probably be a little defocused as well. So let's find the wall. That's this whole scene, right? So just make some room there. Um, same deal, um, control space bar, D, E, F, defocus, okay. And when we look at the final merge, you'll see it's already put a defocus of two on. Uh, again, we don't need the bloom because that theoretically could start to appear. So let's turn that off. So there we go. So they're slightly, slightly out of focus because we're concentrating on the reflection. Now, what if, since I have your attention, what if we wanted to do a pull focus so that when she's obscuring the reflection, we go in to focus on her? Well, let's just choose a range. So let's say from, yeah, 50 is good. So from fame, frame 50, we want it to focus to shift from her to her. So the way to do that is to go into our foreground defocus. And I'm going to use round numbers just so it's easy. So I'm going to change it to four. So you right click here, defocus size, animate. So that's the starting point. You know, we're at four all the way up until that point. So if I move ahead to frame 70, I can bring that down to zero. And then a frame 100. I will just move the slider up and down and back to zero so that it sets a new keyframe. And then I go to 120 and I'll put this back to four so that her focus goes from soft to sharp, sharp to soft. And if we say spline here, oops, I don't have it set. Defocus, there we go. Actually, the easier way to do it is when you're on defocus, you can just right, right click on defocus size and say edit, and that'll open the spline that you're interested in. So you can see what's happening here. We're at four, down to zero, zero, up to four. Okay, so using those same keyframe ranges, I now have to alter the defocus. I need to add a defocus to her reflection. So somewhere after the color correct, let's go control space bar defocus. Okay. And turn that down to zero. And at frame 50, we will right click and then select animate. And uh oh, where did we where did we do the last one? She was at um yeah, memory's going. Edit. Oh, frame 70. So 50, 70, 100, 120. Okay. So frame 70. Oh, in fact, I could see them right here on the timeline. Whenever you set a keyframe, they come up little green notches. So on frame 70, I select the defocus on the background path. 
and I put that up to four. And I go to frame 100, and I will just reset it to four. And then I go to frame 120 and reset it to zero. And I noticed that the bloom was happening on her, so let's just turn that down as well. And you can do the middle plane as, as well, but I don't really need to show you that too. So if you just want to check, I can select the reflections defocus and right click here and say edit. And you can see it does the opposite. It goes from zero up and then down. And of course you can change the way these happen as well. But again, that's what experimenting is for. Have a little fun with these things. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look at the final pass. I'm just going to stop here because what I realize is the edges of the mirror from our mat aren't soft. And the reason being is, is we didn't soften them. So let's just go back to here. And now we know where the where that's coming from. It's coming from this renderer here, right? So all we need to do is find a similar softness, or we can just add a blur, in fact, because it's you don't need a defocus if it's just taking the edges off. So, because defocus is more uh, processor intensive than a blur. So, control spacebar B L U R. Okay. And we will drop that after the mat here. Drop it in here. Hold shift, remember, and you drag it up, let go, and it's dropped it in line. And then if we view that blur, well, it's best to, to look at it in situ. So let's look at our final comp. And here's the blur. So let's just take it just off. So two is probably what it needs, same as the defocus. Okay, that looks better. So this is our final result.